Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. Before I get started, I wanted to say that our Milo Tree Blog Start program, which is where we set up your WordPress blog and optimize it, is on fire. It's so satisfying to help so many people launch their blogs and their businesses. If you are thinking about doing that, please head to milotree.com forward slash blog start and we will get you launched. Um, We can also migrate your blog. Let's say you're on Blogger or Weebly and you really want a WordPress blog. We can do that for you. If you've got technical questions about your blog and you need some help, just reach out to me at Jillian at MiloTree.com. We'd really love to help you. It's This is such a weird and uncertain time. And I always say, launch that business. Take your fate into your own hands. It doesn't cost a lot of money to put up a blog. And if you listen to this podcast, um, you could get pretty far in your business. So, in fact, it kind of makes me launch into today's episode. I am rebroadcasting one of the most popular episodes I've done in the last year, and I'm interviewing my friend Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. And Tamara has built an entire business teaching people how to paint door hangers. And before I met Tamara, I didn't even know what a door hanger was. But that's the beauty of what Tamara has done. She found a niche. She loves painting. And she was able to create a community of people to show up and paint together. Like, who would have known that was a business? If you're thinking, you know, I always teach this, which is... You want to niche down because that way you can get very personal with your audience and get to know them and understand what they're thinking, what problems you can solve for them. So if you're wondering, well, should I niche down? I'm not sure. Listen to this episode because I think you will find it really interesting, really informative, and definitely inspiring. So without further delay, here is my episode with Tamara Bennett. Tamara, welcome to the show. I'm happy Hi. to have you. So we it's good to be here. Oh, well, we met a couple months ago at this mastermind in Roundtop, which I've talked about before. Um, and I've just been so kind of impressed with what you have built in a relatively short time. So would you kind of start from the beginning and just share your entrepreneurial journey and where you are today? Absolutely. Um, Let's see. I started this business almost five years ago when I was actually eight months pregnant with my now four-year-old daughter, Charlie. Um, My husband had just returned home from a long deployment in Afghanistan. He was um, in the um, National Guard and um, we just kind of needed some extra income. And I was, I have always been a really crafty person. I've always loved to paint and make things with my hands. And um, for the several months leading up to him returning home from deployment, I had been doing something that I called Pinterest parties in my home. I was inviting friends over and we were doing some sort of craft that we found on Pinterest once a month. And when he came home, all of that stopped. And I missed that girl time and I missed um, getting to craft as much as I had been before. And so Rather than going out and getting a job somewhere in town, I thought, you know, maybe there's a way I can turn this Pinterest party idea into a business. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the projects, the thing about the Pinterest parties is every single month we had done a different craft and one month it might be painting, the next month it might be sewing related. You just didn't know. But the most popular project that we always did was door hangers. Do you know what a door hanger is? Okay, I was going to say, please explain. <laughs> I did not know what a door hanger was until we got together. And then I, I, you're like, yeah, I I teach people how to make door hang- hangers. And I was like, what is a door, door hanger? <laughs> Essentially, it is a um, piece of wood that has been cut to a particular shape. And you hang it on your front door at, just like you would a wreath. And so they're usually painted in some sort of cute, whimsical design. And they can be um, for holidays or oh, yeah. like spring or something like that. 
Right. Or it could just say, welcome to our home. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just cute wooden signs. They're pretty lightweight and they hang right on the front door. Um, so anyways, we did these, those a couple of times during the Pinterest parties and I ended up taking that concept and, uh, taking it out of my home and taking it into other people's homes. So I started doing paint parties. I would cut out these shapes and take them to, um, someone's house. They would invite all of their friends. It was almost like modeled after a direct sales company would be, you know, where you have a hostess and she brings the guests and everybody shows up and pays for something and mm -hmm. the hostess gets a reward. And so I, I had done direct sales before, um, with different MLM, MLM companies. And so I thought, you know, there's a way that we can do this where the hostess gets a reward for hosting the party and inviting her friends. And so the hostess would get to paint for free at these parties. And I started doing those and I was big and pregnant. <laughs> and then of course the baby was born, but I loved it so much that even after the baby was born, I couldn't wait to hop right back into it. I just, I think I craved the connection with other women at these mm. parties. And I, so it was a chance for me to get out and spend time with other ladies and so, make money. So how much then? Okay, so you would go to, let's say, a friend and say, hey, you host this party. I'm going to bring all the supplies and we're all, I'm going to teach people how to make these and we're all going to craft together. Yes, exactly. And how much yeah. would you say charge somebody to come to this party? Um, when I first started out, I was charging $25 per person. And then, um, a couple of years later, I increased my prices to $35 per person. So, you know, with 10 people at a party, I could easily make 20 or uh, 250 to $350. And a lot of times it was much more than that, depending on, you know, how many people were involved. Got it. Okay. But you had to have this connection of people who wanted to host these parties. Right. But it's kind of addicting. Once you come <laughs> to one party and you like make something pretty with your hands, you get a little bit confident and you think, you know, I had so much like it's very therapeutic. It's mm -hmm. very relaxing to sit down and paint and, you know, eat snacks and talk to the other ladies. And so many times at these parties, the ladies at the party would say, I want to have one of these, you know, with my church fellowship group or I want to have one of these with um, all of my Girl Scouts and their moms, you know. And so it really started to like network into other groups of friends, even though it started in my little circle of friends. Interesting. Okay. So then you took this online. How? <laughs> yes, How did you do that? Well, um, there was this little thing that started up called Facebook Live. <laughs> a lot of you have heard of it. Yep. And when Facebook Live kind of became a thing, I thought, you know, I'm going to try this out. I, I'm, I'm always one of these that when something new comes out, if it's a new app or a new tool, I want to try it. I love trying new things. And when Facebook Live came out, I thought, I'm going to see what this is. So I set up my little camera. It probably was a six minute video, but I was just making a bow to go on these door hangers. And I loved the fact that when they, when I went live on Facebook, friends would pop up, friends would pop up and they would um, say hi and they would ask questions about what I was doing. And so it kind of became a little bit addicting because it was like, I was getting that connection with people, even though I was still inside my home, I wasn't having to actually go to a paint party to get that connection. Well, wow, okay. And so so you, you were doing this on your personal Facebook page. Um, yes. I, well, the first one that I did, um, I goofed up and did it on the personal Facebook page instead of the biz business page. Okay. Um, but I eventually figured out that I need to do it on my business page in order for it to, you know, benefit my business. And so I started painting on Facebook live just so that I could have somebody to talk to while I was painting and I thought it might be kind of fun to let them watch. Wow. But yeah, I, I personally have like this innate teacher that lives inside of me and I can't help but teach something while I'm doing it. And so tips and, and all of this advice would just start spilling out of my mouth while I'm painting. And I wasn't really even seeing it that way. I didn't mean for it to come across as teaching. It was just me like answering questions. And people but, would be showing up and uh, live and, and talking to you. Yes. And so it kind of, I kind of had two different crowds there. I had the people who had zero interest in learning how to paint and they just wanted to order a door hanger from me and they would watch me paint and they would, they loved it if they could catch me painting their order on Facebook live. So I was painting people's orders. And if you popped up, I would say, Oh, Hey Jillian. Yeah, this is yours. I'm working on your door hanger right now. And so she like the person watching loved seeing the process of what I was making. But then the other crowd of people were these people who wanted to learn how to make these and were interested in this business that I had built. And so they started asking questions about paint parties and how I made my door hangers. What kind of wood do I use? What kind of paint do I use? All of that kind of stuff. 
And so I kind of had two different audiences going at the same time, but, um, you know, it, it eventually kind of became where they were asking so much that I thought, you know, I need a more structured way to teach this. And that was sort of where my membership site was born. Okay. And so how long, okay, so you thought to yourself, wait a second, I could charge people to teach them how to paint door hangers. Yes, because they were already asking me all the questions all the time. Okay. And it's hard to teach that kind of stuff because they're on a Facebook Live video in depth because there's so much you can teach somebody about it. So it would be easier if it were more structured, you know, in a membership setting. Got it. So therefore what, okay, so how long ago did you launch your membership site? Uh, We launched in April of 2018. Okay, so like a year and a half ago, Mm -hmm. kind of? Okay. Yes. And so did you cultivate, like how did you, um, like when you said, I'm going to, I'm going to launch this membership site. Did you first talk to your audience to say, guys, would you be interested in this? Did you email your list? Like how did you prep for this? Back then, I didn't really know much about email lists, so I really didn't have what you would call like a list. I mean, I probably had some names on a list that had come in organically through my website, but I wasn't doing anything with that email list. It was just sitting there. Um, So the main primary source of communication with my followers was through Facebook Live and my Facebook page. So about six months prior to me opening up the membership site, I had been dabbling with Technically, that was a membership site also, but we called it a virtual paint party where I mailed a piece of wood to you once a month and I taught you how to paint it. And so that was one project each month. And then the thing that I noticed was uh, we had about 40 to 50 members in there and it was going pretty good. But I noticed that a lot of people were not joining because they, they wanted to figure out how they could make this thing without having to pay for shipping and pay for an item to be mailed to them. Because a lot of these people knew how to cut these themselves at home using like a jigsaw. So they wanted to save money and cut it themselves, but they just wanted to learn the painting skill part of it. So um, after about four or five months of doing it that way, where I was mailing things out, I decided to restructure it. And that was in January of 2018. And I thought, you know, what if we took out the shipping part of it and we just gave them like a digital download that they could use to print out at home. They tape it to their wood and they, you know, trace it and cut it out themselves. And then I teach them how to paint it. And so I started thinking about this idea. I kind of asked my audience on Facebook. Every time I did a Facebook Live, I would kind of mention it. And I would say, you know, I'm thinking about doing this thing. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to look like yet, but this is kind of what I'm thinking. What do you guys think? Is that something you'd be interested in? And of course, everybody was like, oh my goodness, yes. When, when can we join? When is this? Well, you know, and they were really excited. I, don't you love that when your audience is telling you like, yes, we are dying to do this? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like I finally uh, hit the nail on the head. You right. know, I've been struggling for a while to figure out exactly how I could best serve these people. And once I finally figured it out, it was like the path can became so clear. I love that, you know, again, I talk a lot about being an entrepreneur is like being a miner. I think I might have mentioned Mm -hmm. this when we were in the mastermind, which is you kind of take out your your pickaxe and you start mining, you know, and you go, okay, is there any gold over here? And then you go, well, I see a little bit of gold, but maybe there's a place I could go nearby that has more gold. And then you kind of go, well, what if we pivot a little bit this way? Or what if we kind of move it a little bit this way? And hopefully you've got an audience that will talk to you and say, okay, well, we don't, you know, I'm sure having to ship out pieces of wood was a, a lot of work for you. Yes. And very expensive. (laughs) And, um, you know, you're like, wait, what if we take this whole piece out? You know, what what could that Mm -hmm. be? And that your audience was receptive to that. I mean, I think, again, it's like you kind of make these micro adjustments to go, wait, is it should I go this way? Should I go this way? Let's try this. Let's try that. And And then once you find it, it's like, whoa, there it is. And yeah, you, and it's like you don't have to throw the entire idea out. You know, I, like you said, just make a micro adjustment. And sometimes that's like striking gold. Right. And you figured out a way to strike gold. Mm-hmm. So let's talk. Yep. Okay. So initially, when you were <clears throat> shipping out these pieces of wood, you had like what, 40 members, 50 members? Yes. Okay, and that meant you had to be cutting the wood, going, you know, pa- packing it up, going to the post office, that whole thing. Yes, it was very labor intensive. Okay. And then you say, wait, we're going to take the wood piece out. People can cut their own wood. 
Mm-hmm. And then you launched this. So what'd you say, January of 2018? Wait, I started seeding the idea in January okay. to okay. my audience. Got but it. I told them it's coming, it's coming. We're going to do it in April. Okay. And I think like a few days, I think it was like March 28th or something, like three days before April, I actually launched it on my website or on my Facebook page. I just, you know, live launch every day. I did a Facebook live. I would talk about the benefits of joining, what you would get, you know, how it's going to be this amazing community of women who are supportive of one another. Um, And we focused a lot on the community aspect of it because there is something really powerful about being a part of a community that is all working towards a similar goal and has similar beliefs. And, um, you know, they're all supportive of one another. And so we really talked about the community a lot. When you say we, what do you mean? Well, (laughs) I say we a lot, I guess, just because like, I, I, even though I'm the owner of this business, It doesn't feel like it belongs solely to me because my community is so involved in every aspect of my business. I feel like they all own a piece of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it's a community. Um, Yeah, it's a community. And so even though I'm the one, you know, that built the business, I feel like it, I couldn't do it by myself. Like this business would not exist if it wasn't for all of them helping me and supporting me and, you know, believing in me throughout all of this. So when we launched it, in April of 2018, we ended up having 407 members join. Immediately? Immediately, yes. And, and wait, so and how much were you charging a month? $27 a month. That was our founding member offer. Okay. So, And, and what do you charge now, by the way? 37 Wow. And okay. So and we still have several women in the group who have been in ever since the beginning. Okay. That's amazing. Now, here is here's a question. You're doing all these Facebook lives and in the process, are you watching your organic Facebook page grow? Uh, Yes. Um, So are you, okay, because again, you have this audience, right? Of people who are showing up when you're going live, but, and ultimately you're growing a very big business Facebook page. Yes. When I first started doing Facebook live, I probably had about 2,500 followers on Facebook when I did my first Facebook live. And fast forward about a year later, I probably had about 5,000 and that was with zero Facebook ad spend. Okay. Um, and me not really knowing what I was doing. <laughs> um, I sh- around the point where I was at 5,000 followers, that was around the point where I finally hired a business coach and got more serious about it. And, okay. um, and what did this business coach tell you? Uh, to be consistent. That was one of the main things and to show your face, which I was already doing, you know, was Facebook live, but I wasn't being consistent with showing my face. Um, you mean I've you were showing you, like the craft and you painting or what? Right. But it's not just my hands doing the work. It's my voice and connecting with the audience, them being able to see my face and make a face connection with the business. I love that. But and I, you have such a cute face. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, do. You. you do. And a cute voice and every like the whole package is super cute. I've been told many times before that I have like a comforting presence. I don't know how to explain it. Like I, I, it sounds silly to me because, you know, I'm just me, but they, I don't know if it's my Kentucky accent <laughs> or what it is, but people who watch, sometimes they will just watch because they love hearing me talk and they love like my calming demeanor. I agree. And I'm always very positive. I'm never, you know, there's never any drama on my page or in my group. I'm, I'm very conflict avoidant. (laughs) And so, um, I, I don't know, something about that draws people in. And I think that I have this innate ability to make you as the viewer believe that you can do it. You know, what it, what I'm teaching you, you can do it. I have to agree. I've watched you paint and um, it is very soothing. And you have that pretty backdrop. Mm-hmm. It's like kind of rustic wood colorful. Am yes. I, like, I don't know what it even is, but it looks really colorful and happy. And you do have this really nice, like, you know what you seem like? A really sweet kindergarten teacher. I mean, I don't mean that like, you know, you're talking down, but you know how like you, you know how you love your kindergarten teacher? Yes. Like different than your first grade teacher? Mm Mm-hmm. That's what you, you, like when you're painting it, it is very calming and, you know, I don't know. So that's, that's how I would, and it's pretty and it's like you're making something and there's a, a beginning, a middle and an end. Yes. And I'm very relaxed while I'm doing it. You know, they'll always say, you make it look so easy. And you're, you're so relaxed. I'm like, well, painting is relaxing in and of itself. 
Absolutely. And you're doing something creative. Right. And my goal for the people watching is to help them find this creative person inside of them and help them um, become confident in doing doing this because the confidence is what makes it seem easy. You know, once you become confident, it's easy and you can relax and paint. One thing I would say is you seem so non-judging. Yeah. (laughs) Like you're the expert. But you are so um, not like superior, you know, not like I, I know what I'm doing. You're just so welcoming. Well, it's I always think of it. Would you rather have someone standing on a hill preaching down to you at the bottom of the hill, telling you what to do to get to the top of the hill? Or would you rather, whether, rather them come to the bottom of the hill, grab your hand and help you up? I love it. You yeah. know, and I, I have that philosophy. I want to be down in the trenches with them, helping them get to the top. Imagine growing your Instagram followers with no work. Highly engaged followers. Now imagine it with Pinterest, Facebook, YouTube. How about new email subscribers? Seriously, no work. This is all possible if you install the Milo Tree pop-up on your blog. David, my husband, and I started our blog, Catch My Party, in 2009. We've since grown it into the largest party idea site on the web with millions of page views per month. We did it with hard work and our secret weapon, our Milo Tree pop-up, which David built for us. We've grown our Pinterest followers to over 1.3 million and our Instagram followers to over 164,000. And right now, 8,000 other bloggers just like you are using Milo Tree to grow their businesses. With Milo Tree, you can focus on growing one platform or switch between several. But here is the important thing. If you aren't converting your visitors into followers, subscribers, and customers, you're honestly wasting your own traffic. Make this asset your visitors work for you. Since we're bloggers, we get bloggers. So we've optimized Milo Tree like crazy. It's a snap to install. It won't slow your site down. It's Google friendly on mobile and it's so darn cute. You can even add animated sparkles to your pop-up if you like. Sign up now and get your first 30 days for free. Please pause this episode and head to milotree.com to sign up. I know you will thank me. As a bonus, once you sign up, I'm going to send you weekly actionable business tips to help you grow your business. I've been at this a long time and I have a lot to share. Remember, your scarcest resource is not money, it's time. So let Milo Tree free up time for you so you can focus on the other important parts of your business. So what are you waiting for? Hit pause, head to Milo Tree and sign up today. So let's go back to your Facebook page. So uh, you, so you're doing Facebook Lives. You then mm-hmm. hire a business coach. Your business coach says, be consistent. So you get onto yes. Facebook Live and you start doing them how often? Um, I started doing Facebook Lives twice a week. Okay. And do you say mm-hmm. I'm showing up at this time and this time? No, that's, well, for the most part, no. I do that now a little bit more, but my personality is I love to like fly by the seat of my pants and I don't like to be held down to a schedule. It's difficult for me to show up at a certain time at a certain place. And so I will usually just, um, back then I was just hopping on whenever, um, whenever I had the moment, because as a mom with, you know, a toddler underfoot, if she decided to take a nap, I hopped on, on Facebook live or I would do it late at night while she was in bed. But now that I've been in business longer, she's older, I have the ability to structure my time better. So I do show up consistently at a more specific time. Okay, so now. then so you start showing up more regularly cuz your business coach tells you you need to do this, you need to show your face. Yeah. And um and now how is your page growing at this point? And when was this? Um I hired the business coach in August of 2017 and at that time I believe I was at um, it was around 5,000 Facebook followers. And then by January, I was up to about 7,500 and I had played with Facebook ads a little bit, but it is so intimidating. I couldn't get it right. So in January of 2018, I hired someone to do my Facebook ads for me. And that made a huge difference. And this was all to grow followers. Right. Because I knew the more people I got into my world, all I had to do was get them to watch me paint. And I, I feel like, like I said earlier, my zone of genius is helping you get over that fear and thinking that you can do it. So if I can get you to watch me, I can get you to believe you can do it. Then you'll want to join my membership. Got it. 
Okay, so so running these ads, all of a sudden your Facebook page starts taking off. Yes. Um, by the spring, by the time we launched the membership in April of 2018, so four months later, um, we had grown to about 15,000 Facebook followers. So we had doubled it in about four months okay. with Facebook ads. Um, and then now, today, I'm at 103,000 Facebook followers. And, and, but even more so, very um, engaged. Yes. It's not just empty follow. Like they are all very engaged. They, they show up when I do a Facebook live and, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's great. It's a wonderful community. Okay. So let's fast forward again now (laughs) to you saying, I'm going to do this membership site where I'm going to give you the download to, you know, make your wood and we're going to show up. And what are you offering? And this is 20, what did you say? $27 a month, $29 a month. 27 27 and you go here's what you get in my membership site right they would get access to a private facebook group where which we call the painters clubhouse and um, they get two of the printable templates each month that they can trace and cut out their own wood with and then they get two video tutorials one is taught by me over one of the designs and then the second one is usually taught by a guest instructor and that's the second template that they get um, and, and then these, we usually these you've recorded beforehand. Sometimes yes, and sometimes they are live inside the Facebook group. And how My long, community how, prefers the live videos, so they can so interact with you. Those. Yes, and, and they can ask questions while I'm painting. And how long are these tutorials? Um, usually around forty minutes, forty forty five minutes. Okay, so they get two of these a month, and then what else are they getting? Um, usually we do some sort of, um, like technique kind of video. So we might teach, uh, bow making, or we might teach hand lettering or, um, how to do a specific kind of pattern, just something that's very specific. That's not, you know, that they could use on any door hanger that they want to paint. It's just to improve their skills. Okay. And then what about though, this is what I love the live painting. Oh, when I paint the door hanger live? Yeah, so don't you, so you invite them in the membership, don't they get certain kind of educational tutorials, but then aren't they also invited to come and paint live? Yes, well, that wasn't originally offered back in uh, 2018, but now that has become a very important piece of the membership. We call them Zoom paint parties, and um, they get a Zoom link, and they're invited to grab whatever project that they've been putting off and not had time to work on that week, and they just come and paint with us. And so I'm not teaching anything during those Zoom paint parties, but it's more just a chance to interact. And so they talk to each other. They talk to me. They share tips and advice or they talk about, you know, starting a paint party business or whatever it is. Or sometimes they just talk about the struggles of being a mom. And so it's just a, re- a great chance for them to get to know other members, get to spend time with me and to paint. That is okay. So when did you come up? Because again, remember, we're talking about mining for gold, right? Yes. So you start off your membership and you've got, you know, I've got these two, you know, we're going to do two workshops a month, right? Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, I guess you said, and then we're going to introduce paint parties. Um, well, the paint parties is, is something that, oh, the Zoom paint parties. The Zoom paint parties. I was thinking of in-person paint parties. Oh, no, no, no. But like adding the Zoom paint parties. Yes. One year later, um, when we launched it this past April, April 2019, that was when we started implementing those um, monthly Zoom paint parties. And we started out doing them once a month, but they were such a hit that we started began doing them twice a month. And now I'm actually toying with the idea of doing them weekly. And I may not show up on them weekly, but that really doesn't matter, Jillian. Like they, they want to communicate with each other just as much or more so than they want to communicate with me. And so just providing the space for them to do that is so valuable. Again, like as you say, it's a we, it's not a me. Yes, exactly. Okay, so on Zoom, like how does it work? So how many people can show up on your Zoom paint party and like have their little video, you know, like where you can see them? Like how many people can you see at once on the paint party? Um, The largest group that we've had so far was about... I want to say 60 people. Normally we don't have more than 30 or so show up, but the first one we had after this last launch, we had like 60 people and zoom has this really cool feature called breakout rooms. 
Okay. And as the host, I can take the large group of people and segment them into breakout rooms. And so then they might be only four in a group or five in a group and they can chat amongst themselves without feeling like they are drowning in this huge sea of people and they get more one-on-one interaction. And so usually we'll start out in a large group with everyone's tiny little photo or video up on the screen and everyone will kind of be muted and I'll, as the hostess, welcome everyone. And um, sometimes we'll tell like what's going on in our lives this week. And so we'll have the little Zoom raise your hand feature. And when they raise their hand, I'll bring them up on video and just say, so what, what was something great that happened this week? And someone might say, you know, I sold my first door hanger and we all celebrate with them. And then after we've had that little introductory moment, we do the breakout rooms. And then at the end of about 45 minutes or so, we will all come back into a large group again inside of Zoom. And usually we do a little share session where we say, okay, what was one takeaway that you got from your breakout group? And so some of them will come on there and they'll say, you know, I didn't know about these amazing paint pens, you know, and so they'll start sharing with the group this amazing thing that they just discovered. And so it's really great. They just love it. Do you feel like you've come full circle? Yes. Like it's, like from when you started your paint parties. Oh, no. When you started your Pinterest parties and mm-hmm. you wanted community and you wanted a group of women coming together with a shared activity, but also to build community and support each other. I've never thought about it like that. But yeah, you're right. I started doing those Pinterest parties because I needed time with other women. I needed that community. Um, and especially was, as, you, as you have kids, like... I, mm-hmm. I find that especially when you have little kids, like when you have little kids, it's a really potentially lonely time. Well, not just that, but there's so many women in my group who are now um, retired or close to retirement and they're, you know, they've got empty nests now and they need to interact with other people because it's just them and their spouse or perhaps their spouse has passed away and they're home alone. And so they need community just as much as us bu- busy mamas. Right. And, you know, they say, again, that it improves your life and your longevity and all your health markers and stuff just by being part of a community. Yes. And what's neat about today is you can be in a virtual community and it's you still get the benefits without having to get in your car and drive somewhere and, you know, that like, boom, you just turn on your computer and there are people who want to interact with you and get to know you. Right. And I can't tell you how many women in this membership have told me that it has been life changing. And so that just feels like icing on the cake for me. You know, Uh, I wanted to do this to support my family and bring a community together, but I never envisioned the ripple effect that it could have on these women and their lives and their financial lives, because so many of them have started their own businesses or just started selling a few door hangers here and there to help, you know, pay the bills. And it's been huge for them. So is this then your, okay, so now how many members do you have in your membership site? Uh, We are at about 950 right now. That's incredible. That's incredible. And so is this your main business right now? Are you also, for example, do you have an Etsy shop where you sell your door hangers? Because again, you were starting by making door hangers for people. Uh, This is about... It it was a huge chunk of my business until recently where the other parts of my business have been built up. And now it's about a 50% chunk of my income. The other chunk comes from my Shopify store okay, where I sell the wooden cutouts and I sell the printable downloadable templates. And so that brings in quite a bit of revenue each month. I love it. I love how you've been able to just, again, like build on what you love and what you discovered. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's just amazing. Okay, so in terms of then, are you active, for example, on Instagram? Or are you still like, you know, people will say Facebook's dead, I can't build a business (laughs) on Facebook, and you show that yes, you can. Yeah, Facebook is my my biggest platform, but my second largest would have to be Instagram. I do Instagram stories every single day. Um, I'm not very good at being consistent at posting on the, you know, my Facebook feed or my Instagram feed. Okay. But um, I'm very consistent with Instagram stories. And so um, I think that just really helps with that, um, you know, getting connected with your audience. They feel like they know you because they get to see a little bit of you every day and see what's going on behind the scenes. And do you find that your audience on Instagram is different from your Facebook audience or there's a A little bit? I feel like they're a little younger. It's it's more of the busy mamas and less of the older retired ladies. The retired ladies are usually over on Facebook, but 
Right. Yeah. And do you have a team to help you? Yes. I didn't always, but I do now. <laughs> and what does your team consist of? Um, well, we have uh, a lady who is considered our like director of operations, if you will. She, um, she actually built my website. She manages the membership site area. And then she also sort of delegates tasks to the other members on the team. Because for the longest time, I was the one who was going back and forth with every single team member. And it's exhausting trying to micromanage and make sure that everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing. And so she has kind of taken on that role so that it opens me up to be able to think about, you know, where the business is going and what's next instead of all the tiny little pieces. And then, um, of course, I've got the same lady with me who started um, running my Facebook ads, and she's still with me today. She also helps me with my content and what we're posting on Facebook and Instagram. And, and, how, then, and how often are you posting, for example, on Facebook? Uh, at least three times a day, sometimes okay. more. Okay. So you're still yeah. very, so you're not just doing lives on Instagram. I mean, on Facebook, you're also posting and engaging and that kind of thing. Right. Like we might share a viral video or take a poll or share some sort of tip. Or a lot of times on Mondays, we will ask people to share what they have painted with us. And in that post, we get easily 150, 200 comments of photos of their door hangers that they've been painting. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I love how just organically you've been able to cultivate. I mean, you are the perfect example of somebody who found something she's passionate about, uh, figured out that other people are passionate about it and built an authentic organic community to serve these people and yourself. And it's so niche specific. I never would have dreamed that I could have a page with a hundred thousand followers on people who are interested in painting door hangers. <laughs> yes. No, no. Here's my, here's one of my last questions. Do you have a blog? Uh, yes, it's relatively new. We only just started it within the last um, six months or so, but it, we have gotten really consistent on it in the last month and started pe posting two or three times a week covering different topics that people would be searching for in, related to door hangers. And so I'm, that's one of the things I'm most proud of right now is that blog and how it is growing. And it just feels, you know, with social media, you post something and tomorrow it's like down in the feed and it's gone. And it's really difficult to go back and look at old content of mine. But on a blog, it's like, this beautiful curated masterpiece where they can easily go back and look at things we've published. It feels more organized and easy to access. Right. And, and, and like you can have a library of information. Yes. Like somebody can get lost learning all the different tips and things that you're writing. Yes. Okay. And so, so I do have someone on my team writing those blogs, but I'm giving her um, photos or video, and I'm telling her the content. I'm usually giving her a lot of the words, but she's just putting them in a fancier, more polished way than I would put them. <laughs> right. Because she's got the time to dedicate to it. So she she does a beautiful job with it. Got it. Okay. What is the one tool that you could not live without? Um, right now, I feel like it is like the Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, like we are using all the Google apps. <laughs> I do too. Right and, and they're so easy to share. Yes. I, I mean, with my team, we are in those apps every single day. And it has been amazing to be able to share things with my team using those apps. Absolutely. Like, and my daughter who's 12 and in school, like she'll be like, she's a master. Like she's like, mom, I use Google <laughs> Slides, you know, to make presentation. I'm like, I haven't even ventured into that. I haven't I, either. I agree. <laughs> That's great. Okay. So if you were just like, so let's, let's say that you could talk to yourself when five years ago, when you were just starting out, what piece of advice would you give yourself? Um, the one thing that I feel like I struggled with early on, and I see a lot of people in the creative industry struggle with is worrying about what the competition is doing. And so the moment that I decided to focus on community and worry less about the competition to put on blinders, so to speak, and only look at the path I was going on, um, things changed for me. Like It was like all of a sudden, all of these opportunities started coming in and my community became bigger and tighter knit. And so I have, I'm a huge proponent and believer in the community over competition mindset. And so I wish I had found that sooner. Oh, I think that is very powerful. Okay, if people... Mm -hmm. Tamara, if people want to reach out to you, what is the best way? And f and see what you're doing. 
Um, probably on Facebook, Southern Adornments Decor. Adornments okay. has two O's in it because door hanger has two O's. So adornments with two O's. <laughs> okay. So Southern Adornments. <laughs> okay. Yes. And so the, so faith, and if they wanted to reach out, should they reach out via Facebook? Um, if, if they wanted to actually message me, Instagram uh, DMs is probably the quickest and easiest way to get directly to me. Okay. And on Instagram, you are? Uh, Southern Adornments Decor. Perfect. Well, mm-hmm. Tamara, I have to say... I, I think this episode is so chock full of of really good advice, uh, you know, and again, I just this idea of what a community that feeds your soul, how, how that can turn into a very successful business. Yes, I agree. Thank well, you. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure. Wasn't that such a cool and inspiring interview? Um, it's amazing what you can build on the internet, that there are so many different people interested in so many things. And if you can tap into a need, you can build a business. So I, I, I want to encourage you to be creative and to test things and especially to build that business. So again, if you've been sitting on the fence, I urge you to go uh, to hire us to build your blog so you you will know that you are set up right. Technology can be tricky. David and I talk about this all the time. Setting up a WordPress blog is not super easy, especially because there are so many decisions to make. Let us make those decisions for you because we know what you need and we want to work with you. So please head to milotree.com forward slash blog start and and do it i mean there's no better time uh this is this is your moment so seize it and i'll see you here again next week 